Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. And in this week's video, we're going to talk about infrastructure as code. Now, you've probably heard some of the different acronyms out there that talk about network virtualization. We've got SDN, Software Defined Networks. We've got SD Access, where we can use software to define security parameters for the network. We've got SD-WANs, Software Defined Wide Area Networks, where we can have overlay networks that are virtualized connections over a physical underlay network. Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at another acronym, IAC, Infrastructure as Code, where we can use code along with an application to send configurations out to our network devices. And we'll give you some examples of the different applications or utilities we might use to do that. And if you enjoy this training and you want to dive a little bit deeper with us, you're welcome to check out the first module for free from some of our video training series. You could taste test, if you will, our CCNA training, a CCMP Enterprise, a Security, Collaboration. And all you have to do is sign up at kwtrain.com slash course hyphen samples. Completely free, you get to watch the first module of any of these courses, or all of those courses if you want to. And if you enjoy this week's video, please do me a big favor and click the like button, share this video video, subscribe, and turn on notifications uh, so we can let you know when our next video comes out. But for now, sit back and relax and check out this concept of IAC, Infrastructure as Code. One of the buzzwords we might hear in the industry a lot these days is Infrastructure as Code, or IAC. In this video, let's define what is Infrastructure as Code. What can it do for us? Well, when we say code, we're talking about a document, a configuration file. And it's a lot like a program, a lot like a Python program. We talk about coding in Python. Well, we could write code that defines our infrastructure. And here are some things that IEC can do for us. It could provision infrastructure devices. After all, we can spin up virtual servers. We can define virtual switches, routers, firewalls. We could do that manually, or we could just have this configuration file, this code, in other words, that does it for us. That way, if I want to spin up another server with identical settings, I've got the code to do that. It's not as prone to errors. It's going to give us more consistency, and it's going to make it a lot quicker to do. In addition to provisioning those devices, this code can also configure an infrastructure that we already have. Maybe we're defining parameters for a network interface card. Here's your IP address. Here's your subnet mask. Here's your default gateway. Maybe we configure routing protocols like OSPF on a virtualized router, and we might also use infrastructure as a code to deploy and manage applications. So we could install the applications on servers with this code and set the configuration parameters for those applications. And over time, we might want to apply updates and patches to those applications. We can do all that with code. Now, let me give an example of what this code might look like. In this example, let's say that we're wanting to provision a Linux server. So here we have this code that's defining this resource called virtual machine. For this virtual machine resource, we see the name of it. We see it's going to have a couple of virtual CPUs. We've got about 8 gig of memory. The domain's kwtrain.local, and you see some other parameters as well. We see that the IP address is going to be 172.16.1.33. We see the gateway. We see the subnet mask length. We see the DNS servers that we're going to be pointing to, and we see how we're provisioning the storage. We're going to be installing this on our hypervisor's data store called data store underscore one. It's going to be thin provisioned, and we're going to be using Eastern time, specifically New York time for the time zone for this server. Well, we push that into our cloud provider and say, I want to define this VM, and suddenly we've got this Linux VM defined. And there are different tools out there that can do this infrastructure as code for us to do the provisioning or to do the installation or to do the configuration. And they all differ a little bit. Let me give you just a few common examples to provision the infrastructure, like spinning up a server, spinning up a virtual router. We might use something called Terraform to do the configuration management after we have something in place. Maybe we use Puppet or Chef or Ansible is another popular one. And in this video, we don't need to spend time discussing each one, and this is not a comprehensive listing, but to give you a better sense for what's happening here, let's take Ansible as an example. 
Let's see how Ansible can be used for configuration management. Let's say that I've got these Cisco Nexus switches in my data center, and I've got an Ansible server, and I want to push out a configuration and have it be consistent across all of these switches, and I'm going to define that configuration in what's called an Ansible playbook. And the language that the playbook is written in is called YAML. And YAML, when I first heard it, I thought, oh, that probably stands for yet another markup language. Because in Unix, there's a compiler called YAC, yet another compiler compiler. So I thought, okay, this is yet another markup language. Actually, it's not. After doing a lot of research on this, I've discovered that YAML actually stands for YAML ain't markup language. That's the format of this configuration file. And we're going to have the configuration instructions in this playbook written in YAML. And we're going to run that playbook against an inventory. That's a list of the devices that we want to configure. In this case, it's a list of those Cisco Nexus switches. We run the playbook against the inventory. And something that's unique about Ansible as compared to other configuration management tools like Puppet or Chef is it does not require an agent on the device. Typically with Puppet, we have a Puppet agent running on the device that's going to be configured. Or we have a Chef agent running on the device that we're going to configure. However, with Ansible, that's not a requirement. And to give you an example of what an Ansible configuration file might look like, let's check out this example. And even if we don't speak YAML, I think this is still fairly easy to interpret. We're going to be applying some network settings. We're going to be applying an IP helper address to specific interfaces. And we might not want to apply this Ansible file to all these switches because it's defining the same IP address for all switches. We wouldn't want to do that. But this is just an example. But here's the way Ansible works. We've got our playbook of the configuration instructions written in YAML. We've got our inventory. That's the list of devices that we want to configure. We run the playbook against the inventory. And then the Ansible server is going to reach out to those devices to be configured using Secure Shell Connections, SSH. And it's going to apply that configuration. And we did that infrastructure configuration with code. That's an example of IAC, Infrastructure as Code, that lets us provision infrastructure devices, configure infrastructure devices, install and manage applications as well all from these configuration files written in code. And that's a look at infrastructure as code. 